Hello, wonderful people. How's it going? Now, today I have the absolute pleasure of bringing you a new in conversation serotonin session. Now, I know it's been a little while, actually a few months, if I'm if I'm honest. But we've been working on some amazing things in serotonin. We've been growing the events. We've started a new podcast, Expressions of Happiness. We've been working towards the PT qualification. We're we're looking to really support the community and that keeps us busy. But let me tell you one thing. This podcast has, has stayed true and deep to my heart and to my core. Just I it, it, it's something that I have always loved doing. And, you know, I, I feel so happy to be able to sit back around this table and really celebrate the work that, that some amazing people are doing. And what a way to, to start back into this podcast by having the absolute pleasure of talking to the wonderful Jess Rogers. Now, Jess is an experienced and really well sought after presenter, MC, host, reporter, really, you you name it. She's she's just absolutely phenomenal. And she's worked with a number of household names such as, you know, Sky, Eurosport, um, England Netball, the Commonwealth Games, Red Bull, really the, the list goes on and, and the projects that she's working on with with these organizations are, are absolutely amazing but we're here to talk about something a little bit different something else that she's involved in and something she co-founded with a couple of friends and and that is carbon jacked now i want to make sure i get my description of this right so please do forgive me if if my eyes go down a little bit here so carbon jacked is an environmental startup which helps individuals and businesses basically consider the ways in which they can be more sustainable. They do that by, you know, providing education and and information. And that relates also to the way in which you or the way in which we can rewild the country and also help you to reduce your carbon footprint. Now, for them, their big mission is to ensure that sustainability and that conversation around sustainability is accessible, but also affordable. The work that they are doing is is absolutely magnificent and and so pivotal in a time like this. And you know, I'm I'm so honoured and so grateful that I'm able to speak to Jess today about the amazing work that they're doing. So, without further ado, my name is Will Brocklebank, and this is an in conversation serotonin session. <laughs> Hello, wonderful people. How's it going? Jess, thank you so, so much for being here. It's it's a real pleasure to, to have you sat around the serotonin table. Glad to be here. It's been a long time. We've been in the planning for this, hey? Well, we we have. But, you know, I, I will, I'll accept it. You know, it's been, it's been a busy time for you. You've, you've had a lot on and there's so much to, to really dive into that, you know, I'll, I'll let it slide. I'll let it slide. But I'll be honest, you know, I would, I think both of us agreed that we we both wanted to probably be around the table rather than trying to make it happen over a Zoom. So I, I would also say definitely worth the wait, 100%. Definitely. So, I mean, I obviously sort of in, in preparation for this, just had a little look into into everything that you do, sort of even beyond sort of the, the carbon jack realm. Um, and it's I think it's safe to say you keep yourself busy. <laughs> you, you, you're involved in so many amazing projects, but, you know, Something that obviously really, really stuck out to me was the was, was your work through what you do with, with Carbon Jacked. And when I was sort of looking at, you know, your upbringing, obviously, I think you were living a little bit more um, rurally. You were really enjoying sort of a lot of um, either fell walking or, or things like that and had a big involvement in sport. But, you know, that, that made me sort of think, well, I wonder what it was that really brought you into sort of the world of sustainability. So was it was it your upbringing and, and your your involvement in that environment or was there sort of other reasons why you really felt that connection to to sustainability? It's a really good question because I haven't come from like a traditional sustainability background. I didn't study uh, climate change or I'm not a climate scientist, you know, any of that. But yeah, I did grow up on like a, a tiny little farm. Um, so I was always outdoors like as a child. Um and then did always play a lot of sport. And that's kind of how we know each other slightly, isn't it? Um, yeah, <laughs> I know. Sister. I yeah. mean, hey, Laura, shout out to you. Shout out to you. You made this happen. Um, and it's, yeah, it's sort of surreal, but yeah, yeah. for sure that connection Yeah, we used to, to play netball ball. together a little bit. Um, so yeah, I went to university and played sport there quite a lot. And actually lost a bit of that kind of um, outdoor kind of, uh, you know, the, the outdoors in my life. And then it was after university that I went to, I went to live in Edinburgh 
Um, I spent a number of years in Scotland working as a sports event manager for Red Bull. And all of the out, all of the events I was doing were basically outdoors, a lot of mountain biking, cliff diving, um, lawnmower racing. Like there were so many different events I was working on. <laughs> lawnmower racing. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, we could go into a whole different conversation about that. <laughs> Not particularly sustainable, <laughs> FYI. But, <laughs> but um, it, was, it was then that I just was like, I wasn't in the rat race. Like all of my friends had basically gone to London. I never wanted a nine to five. And I really enjoy being outside and connecting with adventure, nature, myself, and kind of went on my gut. And I was like, hmm, where do I go from here? And then I kind of went on to always continue working in sports. Um, but it was three years ago that we officially set up Carbon Jacked. And yeah, it's kind of my co-founders uh, that uh, played a massive part in it. And I, we both, we all saw what was happening to the planet we all wanted purpose. We all wanted purpose in our jobs, in our day to day, in why we got up in the morning. And we wanted to build something special that enabled us to have a positive impact. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean that was really what I was kind of interested in. Because so obviously in the, in the build up from just maybe just your experiences in, in you know, locality and where you were, you, you had the opportunity to be out a little bit more. But obviously you then said you, you connected with a couple of friends and, you know, they sort of really helped to spearhead that idea to you, but almost what made them think, you know, what this as a, as a trio, this would be a, a, an amazing way to, to push Carbon Jack forward. So they, so uh, my two co-founders, yeah, there's three of us, they're both called Jack, which hence the name Carbon Jacked. Mm. Um, one has got the French spelling. Um, one is the English spelling. I did notice um, that, yeah. And um, they're called the Jacks, um, c- uh, like together. Um, and disclaimer here that one of the Jacks is also my partner, my boyfriend for very long time. Um, we got together when we were 18. Um, and well, to be honest, they had met post-university. Um, straight, you know, grad job. Um, they were management consultants. They then both went on to be civil servants in government. They always wanted more. They always wanted something different. But in government, they were working on, well, they were working on a bit of Brexit because everyone was, but they were also working on um, net zero policy and climate change. And they wanted to do something differently. They they saw, they want well, they wanted to, to, you know, have impact and they wanted to start their own thing and not be in the normal nine to five anymore. And climate change was was the thing they they wanted to focus on. They had a couple of other business ideas to begin with that that I think we could have a whole other podcast on mm-hmm. that. Um, <laughs> but but Carbon Jack came about. It was originally called Climate Positive or Carbon Positive or something uh, bad, not it's, catchy. <laughs> they, well, they've, I was going to say that is a they've they've nailed the name. Thank nailed you. Nailed the name. The yeah. branding and the name. Um, have to give full credit to French Jack for that mainly because he, yeah. Well, and that brings me on to they were the ones to really come up with this idea, but it became very apparent that they needed help on their side of marketing. <laughs> they'll they'll admit this as well. All right, give, give me. I need listen now. Okay. I need I need one I need one example. So um, it's something that sort of was it? I suppose was it the name or was it something else? It that... was it was their Instagram posts. Okay? Oh boy. okay, right. So everyone knows that we we wanted to build a brand, right? Yeah. A brand that people were attracted to, that was cool, that was engaging, that was different from other sustainability brands. Um, they knew they wanted that. They just didn't know how to do it. And so they they prepped some posts. And I think they even put them out live. They're deleted now, by the way. So you can't get that. To, you can't see them. Um, In the archives. They were yeah. so bad. <laughs> and it was kind of like they wanted my help. But I was, I was still working. I think I was at England Netball at the time. Re- I re- I've always really enjoyed my jobs. I really have. Um, but I was like, you guys do need some help. We so, need, yeah. So I came in with you the whole threw branding. a helping hand. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I'm sure, well, I mean, I'm sure they've appreciated it because I, I will say, oh, great. Look at this. This is classic summer situation. Flies. Got a little fly in there. God damn it. Um, but yeah, I'm sure they are, are massively appreciative of that because I will say actually, so, you know, the, the structuring of the website, what the social pages look like. Looks pretty good. Thank Looks you. Looks pretty good. You. So you so, wouldn't you wouldn't know that they were maybe inept in the first in you know in the first moment. So again, shout out to you funny. for that. It was but. funny. Um, so I kind of came in on kind of the comms marketing brand side with my experience of working for Red Bull and just being quite creative. Um, and it kind of started because we all lived together in lockdown in Peckham, and we could work on it day and night. We could talk about it all the time, and so it supercharged Carbon Jacked from that moment. Um, and then one by one, we all quit our other jobs, basically, and focused on it. Wow. I mean, 
it, it that's the thing right with that lockdown scenario it, it provided such a i mean it was you know as as horrendous as it was in certain contexts you know those that were really striving to do something special it gave them a real platform to to as you say sort of supercharge that um you know alongside that branding something that you that you, you sort of lead with for for carbon jacked is this this idea of you know that saving the planet shouldn't be boring so so what what was the inspiration behind that sort of maybe beyond maybe the just the initial um tagline of it being mm. a marketing thing you know we really wanted well basically the whole premise behind carbon jacked is that we saw other sustainability companies that weren't engaging that weren't really cutting the mustard that we didn't really aligned to or we weren't inspired by we wanted to create not just a company that did good but that just was a brand and that engaged people and that was doing things a bit differently and so saving the planet shouldn't be boring kind of encompasses all of that in terms of what we're about and how we want to do things we want to do things differently and you also don't have to be a perfect climate activist to be able to do your bit and so it's about adding a bit of edge and adding a bit of difference to sustainability and making it spicy. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's a great tagline. I think it's um, something that I, f I feel like probably encapsulates the work of, of, of what you're, what you're trying to do. And do you think that you've almost with, with each sort of new project, new idea is, is that sort of almost, you know, that's the top of the page sort of point that you will always throw at yourself. We, we try to. I mean, we do do a lot of the technical side of, of sustainability. So we work with a lot of big businesses on carbon footprint measurements, uh, sustainability strategies, net zero policies, all of that type of thing. So obviously we do do very like detailed, comprehensive work. But at the same time, the way we present it and the way we talk about it, we try and always add that kind of saving the planet shouldn't be boring, that kind of edge to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and have has that gone appreciated? Mm, well, I mean, that's what attracts a lot of businesses to us in the in the first place. Like there's a there's, you know, a whole array of sustainability companies out there, but they might all be a little bit gimmicky. They might have uh, they might have green emojis. They might, you know, we, people will come with us because we're a bit different because, I mean, we put the people part of sustainability like right at the center. We we're, we're young. We're 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 dedicated. Yeah. So I think people like that. Well, sort of obviously, I know, you know, you, you, sort of maybe the way in which you sort of pre uh, present yourself as a, as a company it sort of has that variation to, you know, maybe some others that, as you say, might have a little bit gimmicky. But, you know, something that I do really want to pick out with that is that you you do really make sure that you're you're well researched and, and you make sure that you are really with you know, any new piece of information that comes out, you're you're really, really sort of absolutely on it. And, you know, I've noticed with the, with the way in which your blog goes you know, that you will then pick out some some sort of key points from elements of, of, you know, what you've come across. And something that you reference very frequently is the IPCC. And I'm aware that there was a new report that came out, I think it was literally this year, maybe even a couple of months ago. Um, and I'm sure you can explain a little bit more about what that organisation is. But from that report, you know, because I always think, you know, when it comes to certain elements of reports, they can be very dense, very heavy, and, and maybe sometimes inaccessible. But mm. It, what, what takeaway points did you sort of sort of really reflect on and, and maybe take some inspiration from? So the IPCC, I mean, first up, we're as Carbon Jacked and as a, like an environmental startup, we're in the business of inspiring people to, to take action. Um, and things like the IPCC, now they're extremely important. They, just to, so people know, it's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is a mouthful. Um, I actually did an explainer on this and a blog on this. Um, a part of what we do is kind of break down some of these terms and some of these sustainability things and trying to make them a lot more accessible for people because there's so much complex stuff in sustainability that doesn't need to be. So we try and debunk all of that. But the IPCC, basically, it's a, it's a bunch of the leading scientists across the world. And every so often, they were really rare, but they're becoming more frequent. Um, they produce extremely dense and detailed climate reports about what what the world is looking like at the moment in terms of climate change, what's going to happen and how people can, um, how people can, well, how we as a, as a world, as a society can try and improve things. And basically the last IPCC, well, the AR6, um, there's been a couple of different um, iterations recently. Oh my gosh, it had so much like damning, damning things about it. Climate scientists, are, well, scientists in general are never usually this sure on anything. And basically it said that it's unequivocal that humans have warmed the planet and the seas and it's a code red for humanity and that every single degree matters. Those are kind of some of the headlines from that. And we try and take that. I mean, and as you said, that um, the basis of everything we do is that we are 
we are experts, you know, the, the team now, they're absolute climate experts. We have to know all this stuff, but it's about how we then use it in a more engaging way that resonates with businesses. So we know all this, but we're not going to be preaching about it all the time. Do you know what I mean? It's always like a, as a backbone. Yeah. I mean, but this is the thing, right? You've, you have to inter- you have to interpret the information because it's it's the issue right that always there's going to be bad news cells and obviously it's very a very damning report but i suppose you as a company there is a way in which you can frame this where it's it yes it is a it's a challenge it's it's in not in a good position but actually us as an organization these are the ways in which you you know we can work with you to ensure that you're you're doing the right things and you're taking the right steps because I'll be honest I saw I think it was a there was a graph I think even on one on one of your blog posts which made reference to I think it was like the the the, the changes in degree and the impact that that mm. would have on different um yeah. on different species yeah. and different animals and things do you, do you know any more about that particular graph Oh my goodness it? I think you, I mean it's basically if the if the if the planet continues warming um, as it is at the moment, because at the moment um, the latest IPCC said that we're at 1.1 degrees of warming okay, of the planet. And you might have heard of 1.5 degrees. That's kind of the magic number we're talking about in climate change. We really cannot let the planet get warmer than 1.5 degrees because then catastrophic things happen. Unfortunately, we are we, we are really quite close to it. And to be honest, it's, it's looking like we will cross that and we'll go to two degrees warming and maybe more. Um, so that... I mean, there's a lot of graphs, but that graph is probably showing the, you know, the, the how, where where we're going mm. with all of this. And it was since the industrial revolution that it all it all kicked off, to be honest. And all the fossil fuels yeah. started uh, started, you know, coming out. Um, so it's yeah. I mean, every degree matters. I mean, you're looking at even at 1.5 degrees of warming, um, you're looking at millions of people being displaced across the world because of sea level rises, for example. Like every single degree means that the, the sea is getting higher, which means those countries and those islands that people live on, um, you know, even the UK, London, you know, um, and any Pacific islands are at massive risk of, you know, being underwater in, you know, not not too a distant future. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very surreal to think of. And and I, I think maybe that's also it, right? That this is why the things that you do as, a, as an organisation are, are, are so important. Because sometimes, you know, especially the way in which sort of social media works, the way in which news moves basically so fast is you start to almost develop a, a disconnect to the the real important issues that, that are that are developing literally right before our eyes. And if, you know, this this particular organization, you know, full of, you know, the the leading experts, full of like the the top experts, and they are providing something that, as you describe, is more damning than normal. Right. But the question is, how frequently is that that particular report or those particular scientists, you know, getting that front page news on on any standard media space? Right. Mm. So, you know, coming back to, to, to Carbon Jacked and, and the amazing work that you do, obviously, I had a little look at the, at the different things that you do for both individuals and businesses. Mm. Right. And. I want to sort of flag up the, the your main sort of membership elements where you know you're about um, supporting some some amazing climate projects, which we're going to have to sort of dive into. Some of them sound absolutely amazing, but obviously focusing around sort of educating for for sustainability, helping to um, actually sort of um, plant some trees and 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 a, a range of other things. Mm-hmm. In relation to that element of of education, I'm I'm interested because I know I've seen certain bits that you've done, but. For your your sort of your everyday person, what are some of the key sort of sustainability tips that you would sort of recommend as absolute go tos? Yeah, really good question. So yeah, we um, we do a lot of things at Carbon Jacked, um, but essentially we have. I'm aware. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we um we have a sustainability platform uh, which brings together content creators and tech to educate people on climate change, improve people's well being, and enable them to take climate action and if you become a member you get access to that platform basically and that is the the main part of the people offering that we do and that's the bit that I'm really passionate about and it comes down to I'm I am so I I love talking to people I love communicating I also want to try and encourage people to to live a bit differently okay and if that can also help save the planet then that's amazing but also it's about your own well-being um and that's kind of where you know with serotonin sessions right now and i i I, there's a massive massive link and connection between 
um, the, like the well-being of you being outside and connecting with nature and your happiness. But also the more you connect with nature, the more likely you are to take action, even if it's small action on climate change. I'm always like, not everyone has to be vegan. Not everyone has to um, never fly again. It's about what can people do in their everyday life um, and be a bit more aware. So you kind of ask what some some key tips. We kind of always go down the route of um, energy travel and food um, and and spending. But I'll come to that in a minute. Now, you may have heard of Dale Vince. If you guys haven't, he's an incredible um, eco entrepreneur. And we've been doing quite a lot of work with him recently. Um, I won't go into any details, but he is the fact he um, owns Forest Green Rovers, which is the most... Um, the greenest for oh gosh i'm sorry it's just the, I'm just such excitement such joy yeah. i'm so so passionate about sustainability um, <laughs> he runs the greenest football club in the world but anyway this is slightly his framework as well but um energy travel and food so energy what energy tariff are you on at home is it is it actually a green sustainable tariff because a lot of these fossil fuel companies will say it's a green tariff but it's not so we've actually got a blog on that um, and how, yeah, how does o- how does Octopus Energy? It's Aaron? okay. Okay. It's okay. It's a, um, okay. If you want actual uh, ecotricity, would be my number one recommendation. Ecotricity. Um, it's actually okay. run by Del Vince, um, and he right. um, set up the first green energy company in the UK. So, uh, ecotricity, good energy. Yeah. Octopus is okay, but yeah. So definitely consider energy providers. Hundred yeah. percent. Travel. Um, we travel globally makes up 16% of emissions, um, for the world. And if you can travel electric, travel by public transport, walk or cycle, it, you know, everyone knows this already, like electric vehicles are, are expensive, but that is the way to go. We need to phase out anything that uses fossil fuels. That means phasing out our petrol and diesel cars, uh, and reduce flying as much as possible. Uh, and then food. Uh, try and have a bit more of a of a plant based diet. Um, the emissions that come from red meat, uh, you know, that's that's what you kind of want to try and avoid. So try some oat meat, uh, try different milks, that type of thing. There's loads out there at the moment, but obviously all of this is coming at a pinch point when it's um, cost of living crisis as well, because often those alternatives are more expensive. Mm-hmm. But those are the three things that. And then, really importantly, what often gets forgotten is how you spend your money um, and how you spend your vote. So your money, um, not just on what you're buying and whether you're buying sustainably, but uh, where's your pension? You know, what what money is your pension going into? I recommend Nest. Um, if people are looking for like a sustainable uh, pension provider, we use them at Carbon Jacked. Um, they're pretty damn good. We, obviously, that's why we use them. Um, <laughs> Uh, because a lot of your pension money is funding fossil fuels or funding unsustainable practices. And then never going to tell people where to vote, but I would just encourage people to have a look at the the green policies or the environmental policies that are aligned to, to you know, the possible people you might vote for. Mm. And as you say, I, I think it's about reviewing things that are almost in plain sight, right? It's it's not always about having to to go through these really articulate, convoluted, really challenging ways in which you can you can show a connection to sustainability. But it's just sort of reimagining and, and rethinking the way in which you do the things that you do every single day, mm. right? Um, but I do want to pick out something that you did say in there in relation Ooh, okay. to um, in relation to flying. Yeah. Now, I when I was doing my little deep dive, I did see that you went on really quite. A spectacular journey, um, all of which happened without flying. I think the first one, I mean, it was, it was a long one. It sounded like, but how? Well, how did that idea of going? You know what? This let's let's go all in on this. And and do, I think more importantly, because I'm sure you've done elements like that before. But what made you go? Let's document this. Right. Well, uh, it was called the Carbon Jacked Greek Odyssey in the end because we went from Loughborough. Uh, big up to the Midlands because we have our Shout out. <laughs> we have our HQ in Loughborough, uh, and that we travelled to the Greek island of Naxos without flying. Now, this was me, Jack, and Jack, the three co-founders. This was last May, uh, twenty twenty-two. It came about because we we wanted a bit we wanted a bit of a break. Um, I mean, to be honest, we're always working, but we wanted to go somewhere. Uh, we wanted some sun. Um, so we need to go quite far south, but we wanted to obviously, as we always work, and we also like to inspire people by trying to do something a bit different. We are lucky to work as we go as well. And being a bit of cre- uh, being a content creator as well, I can obviously document these things as we go. We didn't expect it to be, to have the impact it did actually. And it started off as a bit like, oh, we, 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 we're not going to fly here. Well, what's the route we're going to take? So Loughborough to London train. If you want to hear it, yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Oh, oh, oh believe right. me, I'm, I'm, I'm strapped in. <laughs> I'm strapped in. Loughborough to London train. 
Uh, London to Paris, you're a star. Paris to Milan train. Now that was all one day. It was a big day. So Very end of day, day one, we end up in Milan. And then we get, we go from Milan to the south of Italy uh, to somewhere called Barry. And I think we um, we spent another night, maybe two nights there. Really nice place, actually. You know, you could explore these places that you would never have seen or heard about. Yeah, Not for like sure. A dest- Ooh. God, I'm so sorry. I keep hitting the microphone. I'm so excited. That's okay, listen. Oh, it's fine. You um, let it happen. Let it happen. Um, and then we, we were in Barry. And then from Barry, we got a ferry, a very long ferry. It might have been 17 hours or 13 hours. It was in the teens. Overnight to Patras in Greece. And then we got a coach from Patras to Athens. And then we got a boat from Athens to the Greek island of Naxos. Six days. So I'm like... Uh, I don't know, six days, multiple was, trains, multiple ferries, a lot, a dense. lot. But the thing was, I also, I need to look back at the, actual, I haven't looked at this since, you know, a little while, but there's a, we've got an amazing blog on it, actually. And I like you shouting out the blog. It's, yeah, they're, they're decent. They're fun up there. No, I, for, I, for sure. For um, sure. I'm a big fan. And I think it was, I think it was at least 17 times uh, better for the planet that we did it that way than flying. Um, but I need to double check the yeah. exact number. But it was a, it was a lot, yeah, a lot better. Yeah, which is which is insane, right? Yeah. And I suppose that's if, if if there's any 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 lesson to take from that mm. is the is is to continue to really feed into the the public public transport element, right? And continue to to really invest in in creating sustainable but hopefully more mm-hmm. accessible routes to, to certain places totally. now obviously you know in, in the context of, of you trying to go to a greek island obviously it's that's, extreme yeah it's you 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 took the extreme route you know yeah. and i think it, that, that's obviously one thing to be recognized but you know there there are many many trips that could be done that that are you know i would let's let's use the phrase accessible yeah right? totally I mean, we went to france um later last year like southwest france and it was so easy and that was the point. I tell you what, though, we have had so many people message us, get in contact that um, off the back of that trip, they ended up taking the whole family um, by train somewhere. And I tell you what, that we actually, we, we rarely a week goes by that we don't talk about the Greek Odyssey because we had so much fun along the way. Well, and that's, it's part of it, right? But that, exactly. That it's it's also about reframing the, the way in which you, you see that journey. Yeah. Um, well, reframing the way you live, right? It's not all about the destination. It's about how you get there the and journey. enjoying it. Exactly. Oh, that's it. That's okay. the stuff. <laughs> but we honestly, like, honestly, the journey was better than when we actually got there. Um, partly because it was quite windy when we got to yeah. Greece. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so but, a, we actually arrived and we also, were miserable. But the journey was great. <laughs> yeah. Um, something to add on that most people don't know because we kind of... um. I have to have time out of social now and then. We don't obviously share everything. We actually then went on to North Africa without flying. We went to Tunisia from Greece. So we had to get back on this overnight ferry. <sighs> One of the jacks had a big birthday whilst we were on it, whilst we were like waking on up. The... Yeah, on this hilarious ferry. There was supposed to be a disco. A disco, there was no disco. Oh no. There was no water in the swimming pool. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Yeah. Oh, um, that's tough. That's. So, that's a, I mean, how did well, how did you celebrate the birthday at the end? Then? Um, Just... I woke him up with a coffee. He likes coffee a lot. Um, <laughs> oh, and, and that was it. We actually, were ba- oh no! Well, we landed that day. And we went to Naples in Italy. Um, yeah. And this was obviously all still by not flying. We had the best day, and we stayed in like quite an eco hotel, and we just had the best day. Um, yeah, and I went to a vintage shop um, there. We got loads of vintage stuff. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah. but again, it's if anything, I suppose the way in which the the things that you did almost didn't necessarily matter. It was just like three three you know close individuals going on a on a real trip and journey together to to North Africa. Of all, mm. gee, man. Mm. Okay, so you kept yourself busy in that yeah. little bit. How long, so how long was that in total? Like to I, go... d- I can't remember because we spent a, we spent a good 10 days or so in Greece when we got there. Oh, sure. So you were yeah, pretty and then locked in. one of the Jack's sisters lives in North Africa. So we, we're, we're, we're like, we, let's just... I was actually supposed to come back for some Sky Sports filming. Um, yeah, well, you meant to... Was that just on the on the cuff? Like you decided, let's just do it? Well, or... yeah, yeah. I was, we were hoping to go, like, go to North Africa at some point and then we were like... I really don't want to fly. And I was doing a sustainability series for Sky Sports. And I was like, the last thing they're going to want is me flying back to London to (laughs) film a sustainability series and fly somewhere else. So I was like, I'm not doing it. So I ended up filming remotely um, via GoPro and iPhone the last series of this episode when I was in North Africa. Whoa. And we did it all about sustainable travel. So 
There you you have go. to hustle. You have to like... Well, you have to make it work for you, right? Yeah, it has to be authentic. It has to be you. It has to be real because, yeah, it does. Well, I mean, sort of thinking almost about that sort of that, that sense of authenticity and, and, and maybe connection back to that rural element. I know, obviously, with, with um, Carbon Jacked, you, you, you're you involved in sort of, you know, the, that, that sort of element of content. But, you know, as you've said there, you, you have all these amazing different projects that you're involved in, um, one of which is connected into the Peak District, right? And again, I've seen a mixture of videos and things with a lot of sort of almost rewilding attempts. But how did how did that connection come about? And, you know, what, what, what are you doing with them? Yeah, so our memberships um, all support uh, different environmental projects and they plant trees as well. So that's what money from the memberships goes towards as well as having access to the platform. And the the Peak District, well, it's, it's really important to have a UK um, or multiple UK projects so that people in the UK, which is our biggest base, for um for people we work with and our members to really be able to relate uh, peak district national park is an amazing place it's quite close to us in loughborough so i'd often go running there camping that type of thing and yeah the way we work um and the way we support the peak district is through reforestation along the monsel trail in particular there was something called ash dieback disease which killed a number of trees um and then also peatland restoration peatland holds a lot of carbon and so to make sure that's in good nick, you need you need to restore it and make sure it is holding carbon and general biodiversity um, improvement. So, yeah. So, yeah, obviously such amazing work that you're doing with with the Peak District. But obviously with with maybe the, the reach and scope of what Carbon Jacks are trying to do, do you do you work on anything maybe beyond the Peak District or even maybe beyond uh, a national level? Yeah. So it's important to say that, yeah, our work with the Peak District is really close to our hearts, but working with international projects your money actually goes a lot further when it comes to sustainability and 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 climate for example we work with a really great project called carbon tanzania in the intercarter mountains and that's all about wildlife and forestry protection because it's and that's what some of the memberships are and what we support as carbon jack because um your money does go a lot further and it has more impact and we need to protect the forests we already have well i can imagine that as as a yeah an organization such as yourself you you must be just so happy to be able to have the opportunity to to work with just people across the world right because there's that's the thing it's it's, it's a common message mm. like the 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 desire and the need and the want to to, to make this a, a more sustainable place is it's there and i imagine you've been able to have some some amazing conversations and some amazing almost like breakthroughs right as a as a small collective and there's a, there's a small sort of breakthrough that i think you've gone through that is well, it's remarkable. It's also it's also very weird that I've not seen it before, right? So obviously on on our other podcasts, Expressions of Happiness, um, myself and Dave, we always think about um, no and low alcohol drinks. Obviously, there is um, obviously vegan drinks and things like that. But you have created uh, in partnership, obviously, mm -hmm. you've created a, a sustainable wine. We have, yeah. Terra, is it Terra? <laughs> Terra, Maran, which is Terra. Earth, Earth in Italian. Wow, well, there you go. So, what that, I mean, yeah, what what inspired? Because obviously, you know, working in in Peak District and sort of working on the physical spaces, you know, you can really see the connection that's there. But what way, what made you decide to go also down the sort of the drinks route? Well, uh, I mean, saving the planet shouldn't be boring, as you obviously has mentioned, is our yeah, is our kind it. of motto. Um, we like to work on different interesting projects and. This was a really fun one. This was led by the Jacks and we basically partnered with a vineyard in northern Italy, kind of not that far from Venice. And they were already pretty pretty sustainable. Um, Contra Suada is what they're called. And But we basically, we created with them Europe's first carbon negative wine. It's a red wine. And we basically like looked at the whole process of making a wine from like grape to glass and we just like double down on every single process to see how we can improve it and make it more sustainable and off the back of that we we um helped them and well together we basically offset double the amount of emissions that the wine produced so that makes it carbon negative to offset more you know and invest in some really worthwhile projects um, we can have a whole different discussion about carbon offsets and the cells, but it's all about actually putting money towards the right sort of projects. So we also work, um, have, it's a very, uh, it's like a recycled glass that we use for the bottle and the wax on it on top is like beeswax. Um, and yeah, it tastes pretty damn good too. So yeah. Well, I mean, that's, yeah, number one, right. How does it taste? But 
I, you know, I, I think it's it's interesting because I was in France recently. I sort of looked at the at the whole process that you know from from vineyard to all the way through to to actual creation. And I mean, it's 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 deep rooted in almost elements of tradition in in the right context. And what was the feeling that you got from this this organization that you're working with? Were they were they so passionate about sort of creating something that was sustainable? Is it sort of a way in which they're almost looking to adapt their business? Well, I mean. The thing is that we like wine, um, but we we didn't want it to be bad for the planet at the same time. So it was kind of like us working together to see if we can create something sustainable. And I mean, this doesn't this isn't the bread and butter of what we do, obviously, and it's not exactly doesn't doesn't need to be, and it's not paying the bills as such. But it was a it's a really fun project and powerful, and also people want it. Like you know, it's 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 sold in multiple different countries at the moment, um, albeit in small quantities. But you know, in the Nordics, I think we've got some in Japan, and we've got some in you know all over the place. Um, a lot in like um, Denmark and Amsterdam, and yeah, the Netherlands. So yeah, and we, it was on Winemakers Club in the UK as well, but. I think it's sold out at the moment. Oh, well, yeah, you let me know when there's a little bit more <laughs> in. We'll have to we'll have to give that a try, but that you know, it's 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 so great to hear as you say, you know, the 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 whole premise of of Carbon Jack, that sort of that tagline sort of really is embodied with with doing that. And, you know, obviously alongside uh the the, the sort of your maybe your personal relationship and connections that you're making that that maybe is sold through carbon jacked obviously a massive thing that you do is is work with with businesses to offset carbon footprint or just for, to to educate and to ensure they're doing the best that they can to be a sustainable business and is there and I, I would imagine that you've sort of worked across a, a, a broad range of, of of businesses at this point but is there anything that you've seen implemented in you know any of the businesses that you've worked with that you sort of look back on and reflect and go wow that's that's so amazing that that we had that chance to to be connected to that process we've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different organizations from small startups to sport organizations to large corporates but um actually keeping on the wine route we work with Rathfinney Wine Estate down in Sussex now this isn't who we produce the other wine with but they are an amazing organization because they want to they want to be great at sustainability um, just because it's the right thing to do. Um, It's not, you know, it's not pushed by that they're going to get a grant because they do this or they're going to get new business because they do this. They're just, their heart's in the right place. And we do everything with them from their sustainability strategy to their full carbon footprint assessment. But kind of goes back to the model that I said earlier, energy, transport, food, but also nature. So on the energy part, they um, are now installing solar panels. On the travel part, they've also installed electric charging points. On the food part, they've reduced the amount of meat that is in their menu and that they serve to customers. And on the nature part, they are amazing at the nature part of it. Um, Imagine a vineyard, right? Rows and rows of grapes. Um, Often it's quite manicured, you know, around the edge of it uh, and, you know, everything by the by the vine. They actually they have a whole one side of their vineyard that they don't mow. They don't touch at all to encourage biodiversity. And they create these wildlife corridors like all over their land and things. And they just go the extra mile. Yeah. Um, So that's one of them. Yeah. I mean, as you say, I think it's, it's, it's special to think that so many people are willing to look at all elements right i think that's maybe what's that that's that's a business that, that provides the inspiration and, mm. and obviously you then want to be partnered up with and you want to be involved mm. with but it, it does really take that full commitment yeah right? i mean but you, you know you can do it in different levels um another one that is very different but i'm keen to mention is we work with sail gp which is like an international sailing championships uh that goes around the world and actually they're like they are leading in terms of sport and sustainability they are great um, and they came to us, they saw kind of on social media and stuff that we were doing things a bit differently, that we were a bit edgy, that we went about things in a unique way. And they really want to get the people part of sustainability right, which is a real passion of ours and a real, uh, where we're kind of experts in. And so they came to us and we basically developed a whole training program for all of their employees on climate change we basically developed like climate 101 sessions um we developed like a video series for them and delivered to like the you know the 100 plus strong workforce and this is a business that's already absolutely leading the way in sustainability um and so that's really fun on that side and we work with companies in that way as well so you you were physically like actually going into the business and 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 just communicating on a, on a mass level with absolutely everybody that was there. Yeah, yeah, like all over the world. You know, they've got people in New Zealand, and we did a lot of it on like Zoom calls, obviously because of time zones. And yeah, yeah, you know, 
ever wow. since COVID. It's, it's, it's possible, isn't it? Um, but they were really keen to get the people part right. And, but they knew that it wouldn't resonate talking about sustainability in the dull, old, old-fashioned training ways. And they needed some different voices, needed some enthusiasm to it, and they needed it to be done in an accessible way. And so that's why we started working together. It must be it must be amazing to 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 look at that as you say a collective already doing great things in, in in the realm of sustainability have that connection to you and then also as you say be involved you know there's so, I, I love the fact that you say that your the connection to the people is something that really sort of resonates and and is a, a driving force for what you do with carbon jacked because I think that's that's the the vehicle for change right it's just how many people can we get talking about it and and who is it that they're listening to is it is it you know ultimately how is that information being presented mm. and i think that's probably where well from certainly from my perception of, of everything that you do that's what i've taken away from carbon jacked and, and and what's so special about that organization um but obviously you know you, you've had the pleasures of, of working with people that are absolutely amazing but something that you 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 sort of promote on your website is that you don't necessarily work with any you know absolutely everybody it's, it's about assessing what's under the hood i think as you described it on there so obviously, absolutely no name in names, right? But are there any scenarios that you've come across where you're thinking like, this is, there's a long way to go before maybe they're, they're, they're genuine about this? I think it's, I mean, it's just that, it's the, it's the genuine, it's the, it's the authenticity point. Like if someone's coming to us and they want a quick job or they well, they want it done just to tick a box uh, and they want it done, they're, they're not really committed, then we're not the company for them to work with. You know, we are extremely detailed and we're kind of experts in what we do on the technical side. So it just wouldn't be a good fit for either. So it, it kind of just comes back to that. You know, from the initial conversations, what they're, what they're, what they're doing it for, what's inside. Um, and we only end up working with the ones where it's, it's a good fit. And genuinely, most people who come to us, they they do genuinely want to to take action on climate change in the right way, and we help them do that. It doesn't mean that everyone who comes to us has to be like, oh, I, you know, I'm here to save the planet. I want to go extreme, you know, extreme. But they just have to have the right kind of moral compass on it, and and mean what they're what they're doing, and they don't want a quick fix. Mm, yeah, and and with with your sort of um, sort of the relationship element and your your willingness to to, to connect with a variety of businesses, it, for me, what's really interesting is that. You know, a number of, of organizations that you've started to work with are actually very sport related and, and sort of just maybe parking Carbon Jack for a second, coming back to that in a second, obviously. But sort of coming into into your background a little bit, obviously, you know, presenting and sort of MC hosting, uh, reporting, all of that sort of realm is, 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 is really your territory. And I know, obviously, you grew up and you had that interest in, in trail running and walking and, and involvement and wild swimming. All of those things were a real passion to yours but then it was interesting to then see that you know you, in terms of the presenting world that you then went into I know obviously at university you went on to study certain elements of, of presenting and as well as um, a number of other things that you were doing but did you sort of see yourself going down the road of you know involving yourself heavily in the sporting world either from a presenting perspective or, or any other way or is that something that's maybe naturally occurred there was no set plan. Um, always loved sport, which is how obviously I'm here today. Um, played netball with your sister and always loved being around sport. And to be honest, I did. Yeah, I did a master's in broadcast journalism because I love communicating. I love talking to people. I love telling stories. Uh, I was I thought I might want to be a sports journalist. Um, I kind of toyed with that. It was always in my mind. I then obviously went on to work with Red Bull in sports events. And it was always in the back of my mind. And it was when I was at England Netball that I started presenting on 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 sport, on netball. And I just loved it. I felt at home with it, uh, but I wanted also it to be worthwhile and I really wanted it to have purpose. And so to be able to blend sport and sustainability, uh, whether that's talking about the, the sustainability elements of sport or to be presenting on sports that are sustainable, like electric sports. Yeah, or, no, um, I wanted to dive into that because I, th I think that's that's an amazing thing that you're involved in. Like, was that just, a, as you say, that natural progression of, of purpose? Yeah, I think it was... Um, you know, I could have started trying to be a presenter, you know, back at 23 when I when I finished uni. But to find what you really what your passion is and find that authenticity, it came later, you know, and it, and it came from this sport and sustainability blend. And then because I kind of I, it's quite clear what I stand for um, and what I love and what I'm passionate about within sport and sustainability and adventure, then the right opportunities kind of have been coming up for me. And and as you kind of alluded to, I'm currently the presenter for like an e the uh, world e-bike series 
and I get to go um, to some really like amazing locations in Europe. And it's like cross country, mountain bike, downhill, like amazing, like electric bike stuff. And then, you know, involved with Extreme E, which is an electric rally series as well. And I think it's going after what you, what your passion is and what your gut says. And that's kind of why it's led me here. And really pleased to be able to talk about sports sustainability, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's I've I've had the pleasure of being able to watch sort of little bits and bobs of your of your presenting, but as you say, I, I, something that you know I I take a lot of inspiration from is that that idea of as you say chasing something that that you feel like you particularly resonate with, and I just found it so interesting that it, you enabled yourself to obviously go down the sporting route and then also go down into just you know connecting the presenting and 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 sustainability in, in terms of even you know like the esports and things right and you know with with bits that you have done it's so great that you get to do that because i think this with 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 my situation at school there's bits of well-being that i get to do at school right and then there's bits of well-being that i get to almost do on my time and you, you in your time you get your opportunity to present in that realm but also it's it's really really cool to see that in carbon jacked i know that you were working with a particular netball team i think you were their sustainability partner um you were also if, oh, let me just double check um there was a yeah that was it was a a hockey company oh, or the hockey the ones. hockey yeah. yeah they're great so it's it's a real sport is something special to me and obviously to you and I, I want to sort of finish off with with this question, and it's something based on what I I saw you 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 wrote a little while ago. But what makes you believe that sport has the potential and power to be the tipping point and voice that climate change needs? Big question to finish on, Will. Massive, massive <laughs> question. Massive question. Uh, well, first of all, it's it's um it's an absolute uh, honour to work in the sport and sustainability space, and but it's not without a lot of hustle. A lot, every day is a hustle in everything we do at Carbon Jacked and as a presenter. Um, but in terms of why I think that sport has the ability to be the tipping point that climate change and sustainability needs is that sport, you know, it transcends a lot of things. It brings a lot of people together. Athletes have a platform that so few other people have. And they're everyday people. They're everyday people that other people look up to and they can they can enact change they can enact little changes i mean look at the marcus rashford example okay free school meals and the impact that he managed to have there sport has the power to to make these changes and and also to help make sustainability cool and accessible and i just i love the vehicle of sport to send the message about about sustainability and climate change i just i just want to continue doing it and i do really think that it could be one of our big solutions I think that in the world of well-being, I think that in the world of sustainability, um, I, I think that we, the more that we start to utilise, you know, commonplace, um, but very, very popular sort of societal elements such as sports, such as music, and, and we use it or continue because, you know, obviously it's already there, but continue to use that as a, as a driving force. I think that's where we're going to be able to start making some really positive change. But the only way you can facilitate that sort of change is with 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 people like yourself and 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 carbon jacked and the really hard work that you put into to, to creating opportunities for for people to be educated to, for people to be able to realize their current carbon footprint and also just to be inspired to, to pass on a message to other people as you were saying with the, with the sailing collective that you were with so you know it's it, it's a real pleasure to be able to hear in in detail the things that you do and it's also so amazing to 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 hear of the success that you've been able to go through as a as a presenter and how you've been able to link that to sustainability so i mean all i can say is a, is a massive thank you for for being able to well for doing what you're doing and then also coming here today to to continue to promote and share that message with me Thanks, Will. Um, great to be here. And yeah, keep doing what you're doing too. Spread the serotonin, you know? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Well, if you want to see any more things like like this with, with serotonin, then please do head over to serotonin underscore sessions on Instagram. You can also have a little look at our YouTube page, but also on Instagram mm. for Carbon Jacked. Yeah, Carbon at Carbon underscore Jacked. Um, our website is carbonjacked.com. I'm Jess Rogers. My hand is at Jess underscore Rogers MQ. And yeah, you can get us on all the all the social media channels, LinkedIn, TikTok, all of them. Keeping yourself busy, but definitely someone to, to follow and, a, and an amazing organisation to follow as well. But for now, thank you so much, Jess. Thank you. And see you later on.